Hello, friends. Today I'm going to share my real expertise. Okay, you get the inside scoop. And I'm going to tell you how to gain weight. I know a whole lot about this, but here's the truth it's going to lead us to understand what to do by knowing what not to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about strongholds too, but first I want to share a review from Sheila W. And she said, you are a godsend. Thanks, Sheila. I love that. Um, I heard about this podcast while listening to another podcast. I love that she shares her personal story, gives scriptures and prays. This is what I've been looking for. Thank you for your obedience to the Lord. Purchasing her books are next. So, Sheila, may God richly bless you on your journey, and I pray that you can go forward with peace and confidence that what you are doing is what God wants you to do. Thanks for your review. You know, reviews do help others find this podcast, which is really a goal of mine to to get the message out to as many people as possible. So another great way to do that is simply for you to share your favorite episodes with others on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. You can do that by making a screenshot of the, um, of the episode, you know, the front face of the episode and sharing the link or just sharing it any way you want. You can share it from my uh, website as well. So I hope many of you will do that too. And by the way, it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Okay. And this is just between me and you, but if you were listening to this podcast, you are my favorite. Yes, you are. So all I wanted back when I started this whole thing or back before I even started my journey, I wanted to lose weight and I wanted to do it simply and easily. But what I learned over and over again through trial and error of trying many, many diets was that gaining weight is so much easier than losing it. Uh, I would say with my experience, I have a PhD in how to gain weight. So let me share my insights just to make sure you take full advantage of all of my expertise. So I'm going to share 21 ways to gain weight. And of course, there are a whole lot more than this. And I'm sure you can add your own specifics to the list. Um, I was thinking about it as I was reading through my list. One I forgot to add is eat anything grandma made. Yeah, that would do it right there. And that really did do it for me um, because I loved what grandma, the comfort foods my grandma made for me. But here are 21 more generic ones that perhaps you and others can relate to. So number one, eat anything you want. No boundaries. Don't think about what you're eating. Go with with what your gut is telling you to eat, you know, listen to your stomach. And number four, if everyone else is eating it, then yeah, you should too. Number five, Don't be concerned about getting nutrition or good fuel into your body. And uh, number six, believe it's more important to eat what makes you feel better in the moment. Number seven, see food as protection and comfort. Number eight, never move, sit all day long. (laughs) Number nine, make sure to park as close to the door as you can so you don't have to walk, you know, when you're going anywhere, basically. Number 10, Rebel against anything a doctor tells you about how you're going to die if you don't lose weight. Number 11, when someone makes a suggestion about how to lose weight, don't listen. Number 12, be angry because everyone seems to be able to eat and not gain weight except you. Number 13, tell yourself one day a magic pill will be invented to fix all your crazy cravings and help you lose the weight you need to lose. Number 14, tell yourself, go ahead and eat it. You can always lose weight tomorrow. Number 15, make eating your only source of fun and recreation. Oh, man, this was a big one for me. Really was hard to get rid of, too. Number 16, believe that God doesn't care if you gain weight 
and die early. Number 17, think that your weight is not really affecting you that much. <laughs> True lie, big lie. Okay, number 18, buy every diet book and try them all. Or better yet, just set them on a shelf in a prominent place so at least people will think you are trying to do something about your weight. Number 19, call yourself a failure and believe you can never lose weight. Accept your fate. Number 20, tell yourself it's impossible to lose weight during the holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, or special occasions. And number 21, don't ask God how you can become healthy. And if you do, don't believe what he says. Now, I know you all can relate to at least some of those, and you may want to, I will put all 21 of these in the show notes so that you can go through and see which ones are really your biggest reasons for gaining weight. But here's the reality. Losing weight is hard, it really is. But as my papa used to say, nothing good ever comes easy. And my mentor really echoes that by saying, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And that's so true. But the truth is the majority of Americans are in the category of being overweight, obese, or super morbidly obese, or beyond. And these are, there are like a whole lot more in that category than in the normal or underweight category. And you might ask why. And I believe it's because of processed sugar laced with the things that are very addictive, even as addictive as heroin, which is processed sugar. And for me, I would also add processed flour into that. That combination, very addictive to me. So let me ask you this. Are you tempted right now to stop listening to this podcast? Yeah, you know, when I weighed 430 pounds, I probably would be tempted right now to stop listening. But I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself why. Why are you not willing to face the truth? Sugar is harmful, so is flour, not just to those who gain weight, but to every person. A recent study that was conducted over 15 years showed normal weight people who eat an overabundance of sugar have a much higher probability of dying by heart failure. Now, we, we know it's a given that also um, that leads to you know, high blood pressure and um, sugar diabetes and all kinds of things that will also cause uh, us to die quicker. Even some forms of cancer have been linked to sugar, processed sugar. And yet we continue to serve sugar retreats at almost every event and even church events. Why? The excuse seems to be that everyone likes them and they are easy to make or purchase in quantities. It's cheaper that to and easier to buy two dozen donuts or several dozen cookies. So change comes slowly from the for the general public, but it it comes even slower, I think, for us as Christians. I'm not sure why. The truth is, some people can eat sugar and it doesn't affect them like it affects me and probably you. And some people won't face the fact that sugar is affecting them. So we want to just continue to indulge because we want to live in this never, never land of, hey, it's just my fate and I'll accept it. But for me, it always seemed like the minute I ate a cookie made with sugar and flour, I could like feel the pounds adding on to my body. And here's the truth. I, I never could eat just one cookie. Probably one cookie wouldn't add pounds, but one cookie led to another, which led to another, which led to another. So I remember several years ago, I went to a Christian woman's event. And at the break, I knew there would be cookies served and they would be available everywhere. Um, I think some woman who owned a bakery was donating them. So it's hard for event organizers who don't have issues with sugar and flour to turn that down because who doesn't like cookies, right? 
And I knew this ahead of time. I knew before I went that this, this was going to happen. So I'd eaten a protein bar before the event, so I wouldn't be tempted. I think I also had one with me just in case. But still, weaving through that crowded event and watching everyone else eating the various kinds of food I used to eat, it, it did make me feel uncomfortable. But I am so grateful for a friend who is a diabetic and knows the way I eat. She had told me before the event started to come and find her at break. And I thought, ah, I'll be okay. I ate a protein bar. This won't bother me. But I sought her out and she handed me some sugar-free, gluten-free cookies. They were small bite-sized cookies. And I ate a couple, which made me feel like somewhat normal. I was eating cookies like everybody else, right? And I gave the rest to another friend who has celiac disease and candy gluten. Um, and it was like, it was really good. The, the cookies were awesome, but they filled me in a different way. See, I got to be a receiver and a giver. A friend got me. She had my back. She understood my metabolic conundrum. She cared. And in the moment, I thought this was maybe, perhaps, the kindest, most heartfelt thing anyone had ever done for me. Then I re realized why such a simple act was so important to me. Her care and concern for me filled an emotional void that I used to fill with cookies and food made with processed sugar and flour. For years, I didn't understand that I was using comfort foods as my substitute best friend. It was a friend that was there on my command, right? All I had to do was go to the grocery store and buy it or make sure I had ingredients to make it. The processed sugar and baked goods was like a drug to me. I felt it anesthetized any emotional turmoil or pain or, or emotions I didn't want to feel. It gave me strength to keep going when I had set my goals for achievement higher than I could reach. When I wanted to show God that a big woman like me can do things too, like I don't need to lose weight, I can get the job done. And on some level, I was trying to drive home a point to myself that just because I was super morbidly obese didn't mean that I couldn't be productive. And that's true. I could be productive. But I wasn't doing what God wanted me to do. So then I'd still work longer hours, take on more than I should, stress about monetary issues, and try to work some more. And all of this only made me want to eat more to deal with the stress I was piling on top of me at every turn. I basically had tunnel vision. I couldn't see what I was doing as wrong. It took me a long time for God to crack my stubborn exterior. You know, on one level, I was eating to mask my emotional pain so I could work harder for God. And I look back now and think, was I insane? <laughs> well, yeah, I think I was, at least in this one area. I was justifying my false protection, which became an addiction. So a sugar, a sugar addiction, basically, for me. Now, false protection is what we use to push thoughts out of our mind about what we should be doing, but don't think we can for some reason. If we don't think we can do it, even though we know maybe God wants us to, maybe it's what we should do. So we do something to make us feel better because we don't think we can do what God wants of us. So we use false protections to buoy up false mindsets. And a false mindset is something the enemy of our souls helps set up 
in us, encourages it. These mindsets usually begin early in our lives, in childhood, maybe at a time we have had a hard time making sense of what's happening to us. Like, for instance, maybe, maybe we had a great mom and dad, but our father was absent. Maybe, maybe, he, maybe he was working hard and not around, and so he couldn't like, be there, so we feel unprotected. Now, this will really happen when we are bullied at school or feel put down, and we feel like we have no protection over us to help us because dad is never there. He might even have an addiction himself and that helps him check out of life. Or maybe he's there but not involved in our lives. Or maybe he's just gone. Maybe his parent, your parents are separated. Maybe he passed away and he's not there. It's not his fault. But we still feel the absence of the protection. So no matter what, if we feel, if we don't feel that he's going to protect us or that he's there to protect us, we will have a hard time believing Father God is protecting us. And so what do we do? What do we do when we feel like we have no protection? We self-protect. Now, self-protection leads us to micromanage and control every situation. As a child, this is really an overwhelming task, but it doesn't stop there. It follows us into adulthood. The same thing can happen if we have a mother or a mother figure who doesn't comfort us, guide us, and teach us. Maybe she comforts us only with food, and so the only time we feel comfort is eating the things she used to cook. Or maybe she is not comforting at all. Maybe when she tries to uh, discipline us, it's very confusing and very uncomfortable. So we overeat just to feel some sense of comfort. It's the only thing that we have that makes us feel comfort in some level. This is also a false mindset that's been set up in us from the time we were small, and it feels like it's just a part of us, you know, like my brown hair and freckles are a part of me, and I can't get rid of them. And we feel like, well, this has always been with us. We don't even, can't even remember when it started, it just feels like it's always been there. But these false mass mindsets begin in childhood. And if we carry them with us as we go through life, they will become strongholds. This happens if we keep rehearsing them over and over and never question why they are there and begin to start dealing with the root and ferret that out and allow God to help us pull that root. A false mindset is really what Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, as a stronghold where he says we need to be demolishing strongholds. And this is the kind of stronghold that imprisons a part of us, begins as a lie, such as I need to comfort myself with food. It gains a foothold as we begin to, we begin to like feel this is helping us in some way. It develops into a mental stronghold we think we need to survive. I have to have comfort food to survive. When we get to this point, we see it as a protection. It's, it's a self-protection mechanism for us but it is becoming a prison that we can't get out of. And it keeps us further and further from allowing God to protect us. All this time, this lie has been growing inside us to the point that it governs everything we do. How we interact with people, where we go or don't go, what we say or don't say, what we believe or don't believe about God. When we doubt God in one area, it makes us begin to question him in other areas. We are still Christians, but we have allowed the evil one to render us ineffective by setting up these strongholds in us. Now, these strongholds, remember, affect how we think, and how we think affects 
what we do. This is where sugar addiction, overeating, and binging come into play. We try to push thoughts out of our minds about things that have happened in childhood, and we just uh, eat or engage in another kind of addiction just to keep from thinking about those things. We've done this for so long, we don't even recognize when we are doing it. We push those thoughts away by overeating, drinking alcohol, taking both legal and illegal drugs to excess, watching pornography, gambling, overspending, smoking, controlling others, the constant drive to achieve, or any other myriad of addictions. Just fill in the blank and add your addiction there and know that this is a false protection. These things don't protect us. They just help us forget about why we are afraid to deal with what's going on or why we don't even want to go there. We don't even want to face it. We justify why we need these addictions to help us keep going. Thus, the 21 ways to gain weight have become well ingrained in us because It's what we have done to justify our existence on planet Earth and keep putting one foot in front of the other until we can't take another step. Now, hopefully, that's exactly when we will fall at Jesus' feet and ask him to show show us why are we doing what we're doing, or at least lead us to people who can help us and who can encourage us to find the answers to these questions, or they can even reveal the answers because they've been there. That that was the one thing that helped me on my journey. Even when I got to the point that I surrendered sugar to God, I still didn't know what to do. It was a heartfelt surrender to God. If you've heard any of my other uh, podcast episodes where I've talked about that, you know that this was a big, huge turning point in my, in my life. But I still didn't know how to do it, except, you know, how I'd done it before by going on a diet. But I knew that wouldn't, wouldn't work. You know, I, I had way too many years of being indoctrinated with the mindsets I'd formed when I was four, six, and eight, and 10, 11, 12, and so forth. They had been rehearsed over years and years and years, and I believed them. I believe they were just a part of me. I couldn't get rid of them. I knew enough to know that diets had failed me. And my problem was bigger than anything a simple diet could fix. I needed a total overhaul. I needed lifestyle change. I needed transformation. I couldn't do with just a little tweak here and there. I had to have a full on transformation. Now, God led me to those who spoke into my life in ways I could never have figured out on my own. And then after losing 250 pounds, he called me to help others do the same. Now, God is always our leader. He is the only one who can help us. When I surrendered to him completely, then he led me to those who could help me. These were the people I could trust to not tell me what to do, but lead me to understand what God wants me to do to ready my life to receive his abundance. Because friends, we're not, when we're living in this uh, issue of overeating and sugar addiction and binging and any of the other addictions that we're in, we are not ready to receive God's abundance. Remember John 10.10, this is in the Passion Translation, it says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. And then he wants to do that to us, okay? Doesn't say that right there, but that's what he's wanting to do to us. But then Jesus says, I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until, until you overflow. But when you're looking at the thief and seeing 
only what he has in mind for you and listening to his lies that are really only designed to take you further away from God, you are not ready to receive God's abundance because the thief will just steal it again. So this is what the abundance is what God has in store for each of us. Now, a lot of you know, I just finished writing my book, um, the sixth book I've written, Sweet Surrender, Breaking Strongholds. The book won't be ready for purchase until later in 2020. But on September 24th, 2020, I'm debuting the first lesson of the course that I'm calling Breaking Strongholds. Now, this course is only going to be available in Overcomers Christian Weight Loss Academy. It will last a little over four months. Um, and then we'll start on a different course. But And you can stay in. If you join the group, you can stay in the group as long as you want, even past this, if it, if it helps you. But after the book comes out, I may release the Breaking Strongholds course to the general public sometime in 2021. And I'm going to tell you, it'll be at a much higher rate and likely will not involve the commitment of my personal time like I give to Overcomers Academy. Because my members will tell you that is my uh, Overcomers Academy is my number one commitment. And that's where I give my time and energy and help people the most. But in this course, we will talk about various strongholds and work on eradicating them. I will work with you to help you eradicate them. If you come on to our monthly call and share where you're at, I can help you one-on-one. -on -one. I can answer your questions in the group just uh, in writing. Sometimes I do uh, Facebook Lives in the group to answer questions. Now, this is a weight loss coaching group, but if you have a different kind of addiction that you're dealing with, I know this course can also help you, okay? And it premieres September 24th, and I really want you to come into that during that week. Come in now because you can still take advantage of whatever's going on in the group. Come in now. and. Um, because it's only a few weeks before this starts. And after it starts, I may close the group for a while because I really don't want people having to come in in the middle of this monumental course. And I'm going to say it's monumental because I believe it will, it will, um, it will reach you in a way that you've never been reached before. So, you know, the truth is we need each other on this journey. I found that out when I tried and failed to lose weight on my own for so many years. It's the major reason that I started online coaching in the first place. It, this kind of environment gives access to people from all over the world that I could never reach personally. We have people from Australia, Great Britain, and all parts of the U.S. in this group. What a fabulous time we live in that we have access to ways to connect us all together. And I love it. I love that energy that we have in the group. In the group, it's my desire to support, encourage, inspire, and evoke transformation. And the others in the group have that same, have that same commitment to themselves and to the others in the group. I created the group just for you. I so want to help you through this season and get you on track to starting strong on your lifestyle change journey and walking closer with God. So there is more information on the Overcomers Academy page on my website, and you'll find that link down in the show notes with this uh, episode. Every week I share a weekly video, a lesson. So that's what will be happening with the Breaking Strongholds course right now. We are in Transforming Change, which is another great course. So you'll be able to take advantage of that. You can take advantage of a lot of courses that are in there. But if you just want this one course and that's all you want, you can just focus on that as well. Um, and with the weekly video lesson, I share action steps 
to help you on the journey, to help you implement what we talk about on the lesson plan. I uh, do a monthly video call where you, where people can ask any question. We have a secret Facebook group where we post all of this stuff and and you're able to share because it's not going out to anyone else. And it's just a great place to join together with others on the journey. So one thing I do in every video lesson, like I mentioned, is provide an action step to help cement the lesson for that week in your mind. So with this podcast this week, I'm going to give you an action step. So what I'd like for you to do is rewrite, can't even say it's not rewire, rewrite the 21 ways to gain weight into 21 ways to lose weight. So I'm going to give you uh, my version of the first 10, and then the rest of them, all of them will be uh, in the show notes so you can do this exercise on your own, okay? So number one, eat anything you want. And I changed that to eat only what God wants you to eat. Number two, do not think about what you're eating. And of course, the way to lose weight is to think before you eat. Number three, go with what your gut is telling you to eat. And the antidote to that, make a decision about what you will eat before your gut starts talking to you. In other words, have a plan in, in mind. Number four, if, everything, if everyone else is eating it, you should too. So my antidote to that is stay true to your personal commitment. So that means you've got to have a personal commitment in the first place, right? And we help you do that in the group too. Uh, number five, don't be concerned about getting nutrition or good fuel for your body. And the antidote to that, of course, is nutrition to fuel your body should be the only reason you eat. <laughs> Number six, believe it's more important to eat what makes you feel better in the moment. And the antidote to that, it's more important to eat to fuel your body. Number seven, see food as protection and comfort. And the truth is, food is fuel and is the way we should see it. Uh, number eight, never move, sit all day. Simple answer, move more. Okay. Number nine, make sure to park as close to the door as you can so you don't have to walk. And really, don't make an excuse to avoid moving is my answer to that. It's a way for you to start losing weight. It's not like you got to run a marathon <laughs> as soon as you decide you're going to go on a diet. It's just take a few more steps, okay? Just push yourself a little bit further. And number 10, rebel against Anything a doctor tells you about how you're going to die if you don't lose weight. And of course, just listen to your doctor's advice. Don't automatically turn it off like I used to do. So now keep going and try to make a dent into allowing God to break the strongholds you have. So especially rewrite these 21 ways to gain weight. Um, Especially focus on the ones that you know are plaguing you. You look at those 21 things and say, well, this might be true. Then you know that that's when you really have to delve into and rewrite into what the right plan is for you. Now, don't forget to check out the link in Overcomers, which will be in the show notes. Until next week, sweet grace for your journey.